Hello friends, this is Dr. Ashish Taneja and today I'll talk about biomechanics in total hip arthroplasty. So what is biomechanics? Biomechanics is a science that examines forces acting upon and within the biological structure and effect produced by such force. So to start with, let's talk about weight transmission. The whole body weight can be divided into different parts. Each lower limb is equal to one sixth of body weight. So if we include both the lower limbs, that means one third of body weight. So if we exclude lower limbs, the remaining body is two third of body weight. So this weight has to be transmitted by both the lower limbs. In a simple bipedal stance, both lower limbs will be transmitting about two third of body weight, which means each hip has to transmit one third of body weight in a simple bipedal stance. When we go to a single leg stance, the dynamics change. The effective center of gravity moves away from the hip, as you can see here. The center of gravity moves away from the hip. So, there is a stance leg on which the person is standing and the swing leg which is off the ground. And the center of gravity moves towards the swing leg, away from the stance leg. Also, the non-weight bearing limb will add to the weight transmission. The total weight that will be transmitted through the stance leg will be two-thirds of body weight plus one-sixth of body weight of the unsupported limb which equals to five by sixth of body weight. Hip joint can also be classified as first class liver which means the fulcrum is in the center and the two forces, that is the force and the load, are on either side. If we see it in this illustration, the hip joint will be the, in the center as fulcrum and the body weight and the adductor force will be the two forces acting on either side. Here, A will be the abductor moment arm and B will be the body weight moment arm. So, the forces are acting on the hip are three. The body weight, hip abductor muscle force and the joint reaction force which is actually a summation of the body weight and the abductor muscle force. Let's go back to our physics and talk about balancing moments. In a liver, the two, moment, uh, or the two moments should be equal. To maintain a stable hip, the torques produced by body weight is countered by the abductor muscle pull. So, the abductor force, which will be called as M, so you can remember abductor muscle as M, M for muscle, into A, that is the length of the abductor liver arm, should be equal to body weight, that is W, W for weight, into B, that is length of body weight moment arm. So this equation you should always remember. M into A should be equal to B into W. So M is the muscle force into A length of abductor moment arm is equal to B which is length of body weight moment arm into W which is the weight transmitted. We know that length of the body weight moment arm is equal to 2.5 times the length of abductor moment arm because of which the abductor muscle force should be 2.5 times the weight transmitted which in case of single leg stance phase would be 2.5 into 5.5 by 6 of body weight as explained earlier. So, abductor force in a single leg stance will be 2.5 into 5 by 6 of body weight. Okay. So, let's go further. Joint reaction force. Joint reaction force is defined as a force generated within the joint in response to the forces acting on the joint. It is a total of abduction force and body weight. So right here, blue represents the abductor force which is countering the body weight in green and red is the joint reaction force which is 
because of the previous two forces. It helps to maintain the pelvis in a level position. The greater the body weight, the greater will be the abductor force and the joint reaction force. Thus, when a person is obese, the joint reaction forces are high that can contribute to higher risk of getting hip arthritis. So, joint reaction force is the, also the force generated within the joint in response to external forces, both intrinsic and extrinsic. It can reach up to 3 to 6 times the body weight in different conditions. It is primarily due to contractions of muscle crossing the hip. Joint reaction force is 2 times the body weight in straight leg raise test. It is 3 times the body weight in single leg stance. 5 times the body weight in walking. Can be up to 10 times while running. And is reduced to half upon using a cane on the other side. How do we calculate joint reaction forces? This is interesting. We will go back to our physics of uh, forces and vectors. So, the center point, center of the hip is the fulcrum. W is the force vector due to weight. M here is the abductor force vector. A is the abductor moment arm. B is the body weight moment arm. So, this is the free body analysis diagram. In a single stance phase, W or the weight transmitted is equal to 5 by 6 of body weight. So this you should know. So, let's go further. So, how do we calculate MY? MY is the Y axis of the force vector of abductor muscle force. So, MY into A. That is the Y component of the abductor force into A, which is the abductor moment arm, should be equal to W into B, which W is the weight transmitted and B is the body weight moment arm. So they should be equal and the sum of the moments should be zero. Now, if we assume that length of the abductor moment arm is 5 cm and body weight moment arm is 12.5 cm. So, abductor moment arm is 5 cm and body weight moment arm length is 12.5 cm. So, B will be 2.5 times A. By this calculation, MY becomes 2.5 times W. We know that MY is 2.5 times W. How do we calculate RY? RY here is the Y axis vector of the joint reaction force. RY is MY, that is the Y axis vector of uh, abduction moment arm plus the body weight moment arm. So RY is MY plus W, that is 2.5 W plus W is equal to 3.5 times W and we can calculate the exact uh, force vector R by using our tutometry and it comes out to be R is equal to 4 times W. We also know that W in this case is 5 by 6th of body weight. So eventually by calculation the resultant joint reaction force comes out to be 3 times body weight. I know it's complex but interesting. How can we decrease this joint reaction force? This is what normally our patients do. Whenever they get arthritis, they tend to start lurching on one side. This is their way of decreasing the joint reaction force as a protective mechanism. So in Trudlenburg gate, the body tries to lurch on the affected side and this decreases the body weight moment arm and the abductor functional demand causing decrease in joint reaction force. As you know, joint reaction force is a summation of body weight transmitted and abductor force. So, if the abductor force decreases, 
are joint reaction force decreases and that tends to be protective for patients with arthritis. However, by doing this uh, bending or lurching uh, activity as in Tellenberg Del gate, this is not a very efficient way of reducing the joint reaction force and the energy consumed is very high.